So now I've got these three um, pins. They're very specific pins, and you don't have to use pens. You can get pastel sticks that are cheaper. You can get charcoal sticks that come in gray. And um, two, are two, these are good. They run out of ink pretty fast. Demonstrate that. But you can get a whole box of them that has nine shades of gray. Um, and I bought the whole box. It's pretty expensive at Michael's, especially. But you don't get to use the whole box. You want to only use three. You want to use the black for the darkest dark. These are all either cool gray, so you can get these are cool gray markers. So if you're gonna, you can buy them individually at Utrecht. If you decide to do this, I don't encourage everybody to go out and do it. Use mine first to decide if you want to. Um, so make sure they're all cool or all warm or all neutral. Just make sure you get all three of them in the same range. Because if you mix warm with cool, it'll mess so you I'm up. I'm gonna use um, a 30% or I'm gonna use black and then I'm gonna use a 70% just because my 60% ran out and my 30%, okay? Those are three. So see, there's a nice separation in between black, 70, and 30. You can use 20, 60, and black, or 90 if you want, whatever you can find. Sometimes they don't have them all. And the whole box is pretty expensive, okay? So that's what I'm gonna use for those. This is what I use for this one. So I'm gonna start with my lightest one, which is 30%. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna find my twos. So I'm going to paint around my whites. And I can paint anything that's not a one, because I can always go darker, right? Um, so I can paint over. So I don't have to be too careful. I just can't paint over my whites. So I've got to go around here. And it's best to just move this in one direction. So if you do use mine, I will insist that you just paint in one direction, just to save it a little bit. So don't scrub it back and forth. That wears the ink out really fast. I think, Diana, weren't you the one that told me that? Yeah, and you can, you, you can use crayons. If you can find two different shades of gray, a black crayon, that'll work just as well. It's a lot cheaper than these markers, and they, don't last, they last a lot longer. And you can use pastel sticks. They're just messier for me. Um, so some of whatever you already have, um, Conti crayons, they're all a lot cheaper. They last longer. Um, you just have to protect your, you know, put your, your value study in a protective sheet or something. Okay, so I'm just saving the highlights on these blossoms. And I'm going to put a two here. I want to save this one as a two. And I did this originally from the photograph mm -hmm. rather than from my own value study. So a good way to get it to understand how to summarize value, you have to make a decision. You can't put all the values in, so you have to summarize it. Is this closer to a two, or is this closer to a three? You know, so you have to make a decision on each value layer in, from your photo. And if you have a computer, and you're computer savvy, mm -hmm. you can um, change your photograph to grayscale. And there's that a- That is just like cheating. You can do it on your phone, too. Mm -hmm. You can do it. There's apps for it if you have an app. There's all kinds of ways to, to help you learn how to see grayscale. One of the best ways to do it is to squint. If you squint it, squint it around the room, and you can see how that summarizes the values for you. You can take a piece of red cellophane, put it over your, uh, your photograph, and that helps to summarize the values. Um, however you can do it, but your best and easiest and least expensive method is to squint. Um, at your values, and it summarizes at least the lights and the darks. So I'm going to do the twos, and so I'm just finding my twos. The first time was harder, and I'm going to have, when you guys come in next time, I'll have some pre-grayscaled and posterized, oh, that was the other thing, in your computer program if you have like a Photoshop or something. After you've changed it to, uh, to grayscale, you can posterize it. And that will summarize it down to the number of values that you want. So you can posterize to four values. And then it'll separate it for you. Um, if you, It's just a little, like she said, a cheater way to do it. But it's not really cheating. It's just game savvy. That's what my brother says about basketball. It's not cheating unless you get a foul. It's just game savvy. <laughs> or you get caught. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, I don't have to be too careful here because um, I know I can go on top of the twos with the threes. So on Photoshop, you do grayscale and then you go to posterize. posterize. That's what it's called in Photoshop. Um, in other places, it might be called something else. But, um, and you can choose how many grays you want? Yeah, and you can set the value range at four. And then it'll, you need four value ranges. And, and then it'll... will give you a white? Yes, usually, depending on your photograph. So again, I'm just saving the whites here. I'm not trying not to scrub. And I want to make it distinctly different, even though in my actual photograph, I'll show you the photograph in a minute. Mm -hmm. It was, um, there was no flower here, but I, I need threes, right? Leon told us that. We need to think in threes instead of pairs. So I took this flower and put it down here too. So I just want to make it a little different. And that's what's nice about flowers is you just change the highlight and it's in the shape a little bit and it doesn't look like it's a repeat. But with a person, you got to be careful. So don't pick a person your first pour, please. <laughs> I know you every. Know. You can Probably save that for after you learned how to do it. For your very first pour, avoid the complicated subjects where you have to be specific. They're no more complicated to draw them accurately than it is to draw this accurately. It just everybody knows when you got it wrong. Okay, so that's a two. Okay, this whole thing is a two. So I can be free with that. So for those of you on a budget, just get the cheapest way you can. You can do it with a pencil and a Sharpie marker. You just put fewer marks where you want a lighter value. But it's not as good of a recipe. It's not as accurate as a recipe. So if you can find little crayons that come in gray, I don't know, there's two different shades of gray crayons, right? Anyway, you can do crayons, you can do Conti crayons. They're a little bit closer to charcoal, but they're still got waxiness in them. You can do those. So just get a sleeve cover so it protects it at, as so you want to work with. So the main idea is to get three distinct values. Yeah, you're going to actually you know? draw three distinct values right. and then save the white so you and get... it's better to keep it in one kind of color. It's a gray, gray. Yeah, if you, if, you, if you mix it up with color, you'll get confused. So sure. create your value study. So now I'm moving to the threes. This happens to be a 70. You can use a 60. So now I can color in these darker ranges. I'm going to bring, um, if you guys want me to furnish the subject, um, suggested subjects, I will have some images printed out in grayscale that are posterized that you're welcome to use in class. I won't let you be able, to, you won't be able to take them with you home because I need them for the other classes. But I will have some available posterized and grayscaled images to work from. Because I want you to not even think about color. I want you to just think in terms of value once you've got your initial inspiration. But when you poured your colors and you wanted yellow flowers, yeah, you just have you basic. Where you kind of wanted it? Yeah, you'll see a pour before the day is out. Pouring is exciting. We'll have a whole bunch of buildup and then all of a sudden it'll be over in a moment. But I had a missed a two. Yeah, so sustainability and um, I missed this pot. See that? It's important. I can go back. That's why it's nice. This stage, it's real easy to go back. Okay, so then this is a three down here. So this is how creating the value study. It's very important to spend time on the value study before and not rush into your painting because this is your recipe. Okay, this is the bottom of the rock, so I'm going to... So you really don't know what it's going to look like until you get the masking off and then it's like... Ta-da! It's either scary, oh, oh my god, what have I done, or it's really cool. Okay, so that's there. If you can do this black and white scale posterized um, on the computer, do you skip this? 
Uh, I would prefer it. you don't skip it because this is so informative to actually produce it. It will, from the rest of your life, if you did a value study for every single painting that you do, whether you're pouring or not, your paintings will be better. That is so true. Um, so I would, so would like you not to skip this stage. Um, you don't have to use Prisma markers, but I would really prefer that you don't skip this stage. This at least once. Do it at least once, just for me. Um, but if we're going to bring our own picture, then we just need to have it traced and bring just the yeah. picture. Yeah, just be ready to create your value study. So I'm saving my pen here, but I gotta. I can go over all of this for expediency. This is background, and then there's three over here, and that's a one. But there's a little bit of a dip in there. It's like a little cup that holds the flower, and the flower has since died. Um, so I need to separate this, and I can have little spiky edges, and I can put little spikes that are darker here. So you're doing the number four now, the black? No, this is just still the threes. It looks a little darker when it's wet. It'll dry a little lighter. So just bringing out some details. I don't have to get too detailed here. Yeah, it just looks a little darker because it's wet against the dryer. And I'm putting in... I was really fascinated at how patterned these little spikes are. Like, they follow almost like wallpaper pattern. And these were cast shadows mm -hmm. coming off the spikes. I thought they were really fascinating. Okay, now comes the black. And black makes it pop. Just like in our painting, when we put those final darks in, that's when we have an interesting painting. So I'm going to put the core shadow on this little cup. It's the core, or the form shadow, as some people call it. I'm going to put a little detail. So you want less white and less dark. The most of the painting should be the, the number two and the number three. And just pops of black and pops of white. But those probably will create the box. Yeah, this is what this the black against the light is what's going to create the focus. So I want some darks up against this flower. My focal point is this flower. I could have moved it and made it better, but um, from my photographic reference, but I decided I would be move away from the rule of thirds. Okay, so this is casting a shadow onto the t ridge here, which I thought was really fun. So this dark against this light is my focus, my intended focus. Oh, I forgot there's a little cup there. So I'm putting the coat, and then this light against this dark will lead you to my flower. That's my plan. That's why I minimize this light, and I'm kind of pointing to the flower with the, this light path. So I want to put light against dark right there. And then these little spikies in here are fun. And I'm going to make this light against this flower dark. But I didn't make this flower as bright as this one. Sort of like the man was a little fussy. Yeah. So this one's bigger because it's closer but I want to make it less brilliant, less intensity, because I want you to look there. That's an interesting plan. Yeah, we'll see if I can pull it off. I've got three times to pull it off, right? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't always work that way. Do sometimes your colors don't turn out as dark as you want them? Sometimes anything can happen, <laughs> anytime. Because each time you pour, are you pouring a stronger pigment? Yes. And I'm going to get into that as well, soon as we get Because it says three pouring cups, but if you start with the lightest one, then you're going to have to keep dumping that out and mixing your next stronger one. You just add pigment. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you don't have to waste. That makes sense. Yeah, you don't have okay. to wait too much. 
So basically, I want to minimize these darks. I love this cast shadow against this that's being cast over here. So you really have to think about placement because every edge is hard. You don't have the uh, luxury of soft edges now. But this dark hopefully keeps you back in the puts you back into the picture. I'm hoping. So every good plan is just a plan until you implement it, right? So okay, so these are my little. You can't really see the spikes when it's in the dark. But I'm just going to hint at, just to remind myself that I want to put those little spiky nobles, nobules in here. And it's kind of amazing how that little cactus flower sort of popped out. I need to darken up this edge to separate it from that one behind. And put some knobbies in there. Yeah. Yes. Oh, wait. I want to pop out this flower edge. So in my photo, there's like some little grasses back in there. So I just put them up against that flower. I totally have trust that it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Right now it's kind of dirty work. And it takes you a long time to get to the point where you actually see a result. So this is a patience process. Exactly.